Okay, so I like to um, make everyone blush a little bit. <laughs> so you are going to show us your toesies, all right? I'm okay. Ca- I'm calling this the spicy foot cam. If your toes are spicy and you know it, twinkle them. Oh, my gosh. This is so <laughs> cute. You can only have pretty feet if you come on the show. That's such a good rule. Everybody take care of your damn toes. Right. Self-care is the best care. ling ling. Cute. <laughs> your feet are pretty, though. Thank so you. So we can definitely use it. Okay, good. <laughs> I got a little, I got a mole on mine. But it's cute. ling <laughs> ling. We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we're doing how to motivate your man. And to join me in the G spot, that is guest spotlight, I have the phenomenal, the lovely Candice. Candice is a world-class dancer, artist, content creator, and entrepreneur, and founder of 5678. So I said it right, right? I'm like, the dance numbers, the dance numbers. I got to know. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so you gave me permission to say that, like, we are working together. You currently are in a, a beautiful relationship. Everyone you are high, exuding black know. love. And your relationship is public, right? I see you and your boyfriend, uh, Omar, posting all the time. He's my Fifi, my fiance. <laughs> Okay. He popped the question. Sure Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, um, you so I, so I, I originally saw you before you were even my client. Originally saw you dancing like on the gram, and I'm like, ooh, if I could just get those dance numbers. <laughs> and and still, you have not taught me um, any moves. Okay, you but you ask. have helped me with my social. You got. Uh, <laughs> you got oh, that's good. That's you good. have been like spicy. You should post like this. You should do like this. Um, and you are the queen of that. Oh, thank you. So I'm gonna give you quite all kinds of props and accolades in just a second. But I want to start the show off with the question that I always ask all my guests to like warm them up. Okay, Mm -hmm. you get to share when you first fell in love with yourself. I first fell in love with myself. Well, to really be honest with you, I can bring it back to just always getting love from my parents. They've always seemed to have a way to just always pour into my love cup. And I just never really remember a time where I wasn't really in love with myself growing up. I know that might sound a little bit funny or weird, but like my parents really did give, I used to tell them like, you love me and I gave you nothing to love. Like, <laughs> thank you so much. You know? So they, they would just always pour love into me. And I never really remember like the beginning of time where I was like right here, this is when I mm-hmm. felt like, or when I loved myself. But I do remember when I fell out of love with myself Mm. to then fall back in love with myself. Share that. Tell us that. Um, When I was feeling my body go out of whack, Mm. um, I was diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's a diagnosis that's not diagnosed by most doctors. um, One out of five women in the whole entire world experience this. That's a lot of us. It's a lot of us. Um, and pretty much my body was going out of whack. My hormones are going crazy. And for people that don't know, PCOS is just something, uh, a a diagnosis that happens to women and it's a hormonal imbalance Mm -hmm. and our hormones are very important. Yep. (laughs) Um, it's our skin, it's our ovaries, it's our baby making, it's our attitude, it's our essence and it's our weight gain and talk about it. Hair loss, hair gain, everything. Um, it has to do with a lot in our bodies. So before I was diagnosed I had no idea what was happening so it made me go crazy I went to go seek seek out help doctors nobody was telling me what was wrong they just kept giving me back different tests saying that I'm fine mm. saying that there was nothing wrong and no everybody just like yeah go go work out go <laughs> eat, eat right clean and work out and work out just yeah work out a little bit harder Um, and nobody seemed to be listening to me. So, um, in that time process, I was just like really feeling down and really feeling depressed and really fell out of love with myself. Um, I just felt like I couldn't give up. Um, there's nothing in me that's ever been a give up kind of a person. So I kept pushing, 
Finally found an amazing doctor. Shout out to my doctor, Dr. Taya Diabati. Yes. She's changed my life. She's Mine in Beverly too. So- She's in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Listen, as soon as I got the doctor's information, I was like, yo, whoever's going through this, if you guys are feeling this way, if you're dealing with these symptoms, please go see her. She's she's a godsend, at least for me. She changed my life. Um, But yeah, so... I found a way to fall back in love with myself. She's helped me get to where I'm back, where I'm feeling good yeah. again. And you recognize yourself again. Yep. And that's where I feel like I fell in love with myself. If I could, if I could bring you to a moment where I actually remember it. Yeah. You know? No, that's amazing. And I got to give you props too, because you know, when I expressed to you that I also had PCOS, you were like, okay, you've got to go to my person. Cause I was venting to you. I was like, I have a personal trainer. Shout out to Ingrid Clay. Um, and I was like, but the weight is not coming off as quickly as everybody who told me that if you just breastfeed, it's going to fall off. Uh, uh-uh, uh, that was not happening. My PCOS was like, has tur- had turned against me after the baby. Mm. And you sent me to your doctor and you were like, she's going to change the game and has helped me tremendously where now I can like wear clothes again that, you know, I was once able to, and you know, I still work out and eat clean, but I needed that extra like step with the doctor to be able to get back to myself. So I, while I didn't have a postpartum, I definitely went through like a mini depression mm-hmm. where I was like, dang, I don't know who the person is looking back at myself in the mirror. And I needed to find myself again to like, not just for my own life, but also, you know, so I could be good to my husband, good to my baby. Absolutely. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, and I think you have a little bookie book um, that you're going to like you're writing right now. I've been working on this dang book for so damn long. <laughs> I've been learning so much about PCOS and all the information I've gathered. Um, I get questions all the time now that I've made it public that I do have PCOS. I didn't know about it. Nobody knew about it. I didn't know anybody that had it. Um, meanwhile, everybody, damn near everybody a has a lot of women have it. Um, so I f- took it upon myself to be able to talk about it because I didn't know about it. So, um, as soon as I started talking about it, it's like the whole, I, I feel like my, all of my followers and all the things that I've gained after all these years, like it made sense. I'm like, people are talking to me like I'm, a, you know, I'm a woman, woman, a woman, like, Hey, I'm feeling this. I'm doing that. So I've been able to connect with people all around the world, all kinds of women. And so I think this book will really just be a great help. And I'm just going to just do my best to give all the information I can about this, about this diagnosis that nobody really talks about. I love that. And you have such a large platform that, you know, that, you know, you, you show also to like, your life isn't perfect. You had to go through, you know, normal human health scares, just like everybody. Um, but on the topic of like followers, okay. You have a huge platform of people who, you know, you call yourself an influencer and you do influence. This episode is about how to influence your partner. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get there (laughs) in just a second, but like share a little bit about how you became an influencer. How did you grow your following to be so large and grandiose? Um, honestly, a lot of things with me, I don't know if this is going to be a common denominator for this whole entire interview, but dance saved my life. So mm-hmm. dance is uh, the base of damn near everything I do, even five, six, seven, eight, my clothing line and beauty line. It's, it's all based in something that inspired me to be the best version of myself. Um, so it started with dance. I was in rehearsals and when Instagram went from photos to video, I posted a little clip in rehearsal and, uh, it did, I don't even know if we had views back then. I think it was just likes <laughs> or something. Um, and then I ended up linking with some dope creators, the people that used to do Vine and they used to do um, all the apps before Instagram. Um, I did some dope collaborations. People wanted to dance with me. I was like, cool. I'm done. I, I was still dancing for other people at the time. Mm. I used to tour the world, you know, do cool things with some cool are artists. you able to mention some of the artists that you i can i could mention a couple um i used to dance on tour with Nicki minaj uh, pharrell i danced with chris brown i danced with sierra um a couple shows like pitbull just shout a, out to pitbull just some names we never heard of before I just, <laughs> and these people taught me so much so shout out to <laughs> them for giving me an opportunity to be able to perform on stage at the end of the day that's all i ever wanted to do so these uh, incredible artists showed me the world and showed me an amazing time, you know, hired me. So I'm, I pre- I'm appreciative. Um, For sure. And especially when I was 18, 19, like that was Start the gig again. to have, yeah. like what I get to go to go to France and, get it paid for and I get to perform on stage like this is crazy so. I wanted you to start, to start with like how you grew your you know audience yes. but it sounds like you started with like plugging dance and like how passionate you are about it 
But then I feel like you've transitioned from being so much more than dance, right? Like when I read your bio, it was like all of these, you know, business ventures that you have. How did you go from, okay, I'm passionate about dance to like fueling your purpose in other areas of your life um, and feeling a need for, you know, like the beauty industry or the clothing industry. We're currently wearing like five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> you know, right now. And I love the material. It feels so good. So plug to your product. Oh, thank you. But how did you come up with this stuff? It, it all kind of goes like I just remember being going from rehearsal to set to a plane and never having anything that I could wear that was cute enough to be able to do all the things. Like mm. when you dance for Pitbull, honey, you need to come correct. You're not coming to rehearsal looking any type of way. We are not mm. coming in no sweatpants and no, like, no, you need to be, you know, be her. to the nine. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're, I'm from Miami. We don't play that. <laughs> so, um, so it kind of started with that. I'm like, I don't have anything that I could really, mm, okay, maybe this is something that I could consider. So kind of just started dabbling in, starting something of my own and then also to JLo is my ultimate favorite like Ooh. we've had these conversations in our sessions yes. um and I just always thought it was so cool that she could be a performer and an actress mm. and have a business and have a family and like you know just do all the Jack things of all trades. Yeah. yeah and that's always been super inspirational for me so the influencer was influenced oh absolutely 100% women in the industry shout out to the women in the industry that have just multiple streams of income <laughs> and just an overflow thing. of their goddessness um, <laughs> i i've definitely been influenced by the culture and um, by strong beautiful women before me so yeah i it just came from there and then the makeup the beauty side of it i also have the lashes with five six seven eight because we had to do makeup ourselves like mm. every single night everybody's like who does your makeup or how do you, you know how'd you learn it's like I was forced to learn because I had to go on stage and I wasn't about to go up there looking <laughs> crazy right so uh yeah so that's where it kind of happened and just everything just learning as I go nothing perfect and not just trying to be super super perfect with anything like this has grown this five six seven eight company has grown I think I started with like two thousand dollars Mm. the company started with $2,000 and that's from the savings from my tour days and, and you then just turned it into it. a full business and we're proudly over six figures. So I'm, I'm oh, extremely and, and plugs the bossness. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of my, my baby. That's my baby. That's something I started with an idea in my head. Um, and got, getting to this point has probably been one of the proudest things I've you done You know, it's so far. funny, um, and I'm not going to say, like, you know you made it when people recognize you, but we were out hiking with Connor, mm -hmm. and I fell on the, on the like, we're, we're hiking down a hill. I fell on tumble, fall on my ass, okay? Kansas is like, ooh, baby, be careful. Boop, boop, falls on her ass, too. <laughs> I was going to say, say, I just did it right after you. <laughs> Someone walking up the hill is like, oh, you guys, you know, be careful, and, like, encourages Candace like you know you fell get back up girl and then she's like oh my god I just bought your apparel <laughs> I was like and you're like thanks thanks for supporting me as I'm like on my ass like dirty <laughs> dirty it up <laughs> trying to clean it off but I'm like oh yeah customer but I'm thinking to myself like dang you know you know when people recognize you or when people you know purchase your stuff and support that's that like crazy. you're on and popping it's the best feeling ever it never gets old um, starting from something from scratch and then watching it grow is like, to me, the coolest process ever. And I think I have a crazy fascination for that. So that's why I'm always constantly doing something from nothing to something. Always. always. Like that's, that's always the motivation. Well, something we're definitely doing, okay, hmm. is um, self-motivation. It sounds like you are like constantly pouring into yourself, making sure that, you know, you are building the business like brick by brick. This particular episode, um, I want to talk about how that skill set transfers over into your relationship, because I know, you know, based on our sessions, like we've discussed some of this stuff. And then um, one of the like common things, you know, when I talk about like, you know, encouraging your partner, and motivating your man, uh, there's a lot of frustration out there with women. They're like, you know, we're we're tired of, you know, raising these men. We're tired of like pouring into them and, you know, not seeing like the changes. So I wanted to address that and really encourage and inspire women like Look, it's not easy to self-motivate, let alone motivate somebody else, but we can do it. And if we can give some tips in order to make it easier, right? Some spicy tips at that, we'll be helping them. 
And so I think one thing that you're public with about is your relationship. Mm-hmm. I notice on your reels, like when you and him do something together, it's like all kinds of love. Um, so I want you to talk a little bit about how you encourage your partner. He, if I have this correct, um, uh, was NFL player Mm -hmm. retired. Mm -hmm. Um, and you were in the influencer space first Mm -hmm. on social. And then how did you encourage him to get in that space? Cause now I see Omar's like IG is popping. He's posting all the time. And I'm like, wait, this Candace right here. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy because Omar, shout out to my fiance. Fiance. Omar is a ball of energy and has always been such a light, just in general. With anybody that's ever met him, he's just such a positive, crazy, awesome, fun, super dope dude. But <laughs> um, he was, yeah, NFL was everything for him. Football mm-hmm. was everything. Um, I just remember coming to him as a friend. And I was mm. like, I sat down with him. And one of his best friends, Duke, um, I remember like one of my first posts that I actually made money from or a brand that I was working with. I was just like, yo, I remember we were at breakfast and I was like, yo, have you guys seen what social media, like how these people are making money off this stuff? Like, have you guys seen? And I just remember pulling it up, showing them being like, um, I just made what I would have made in a week dancing for so-and-so off of one post. Yep. And it was more of like an excitement thing or more of like an, you know, a crazy, like this is crazy. So showing them that and then kind of just, he kind of was with me through it. Like, I mean, we kind of, we we're the same age. So it's also one of those things where what he's my best friend. So I tell him everything mm-hmm. as it's happening, you know? So to bring him onto this side, it's not like I had to like sit there and convince him or do anything like that, but like showing him tape, like showing so him giving like life examples of like, in this his, is what in his way that benefit. he would understand it. Okay. So how do you, so in his way that he would understand it, yeah. so it sounds like you didn't speak your language. Like you would talk to your girls. You spoke it in his language. Yes. Break that down. What does that look like? His language is football language. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that recently, even like, Football talk is the way to get to your man. If your man watches sports, just try it. Just try it. I mean, I know he has to watch tape, you know, when the play happens and, you know, you got to pass the ball and, you know, I got to run the play, that yeah. kind of thing. So this is how we're going to run the play. Mm. Uh, this is this is. And, and then even also showing um showing him other videos from other accounts that, you know, that have inspired me and. I showed him. And, and he's he, used to watching those clips from when he plays. So he's like, okay, let me reference. watch the footage. Yeah. The reference is key um, to be able uh, to be able to communicate with your partner or, or just any anybody, you know, friends too. like know who you're talking to and kind of tweak, tweak so the conversation. So we're putting it in his language. Putting it in his we're language. We're giving real life examples of like success stories. Mm-hmm. We're showing him the footage so that he can like visually see it. Now, what a lot of women are challenged with, though, is the execution, right? We can talk our man's ear off 24-7 and be like, baby, don't forget you got to do da 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 Don't forget you need to do na 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 How do you get him to actually take action? Show him the bank statement. When Show him the end result. Like, when I started doing this, you know, I put in this much work or all we have to do is this and this is what we're going to get. Yeah. This, you know, this brand or this company paid this much for this post. And, you know, it's it's a business and men love I mean, men love business. Yeah. Men love money. Men love money. All people love money. Right. But men, if you talk to them in a very logical way when it comes to, you know, not just how I feel like, baby, I feel like you should do this. If we start speaking in emotions of like, you know, um, uh, trying to talk to them in a way that doesn't support logic, which is how they usually like communicate with each other. They're not going to listen. But when you speak in a logical way and you're like, look, this is why it makes sense. And you gave those examples and showed the outcome. Now he's able to see like what the end result would be and start making moves on it. Show him the end result. And I was definitely very excited about all of the things that were coming or, you know, seeing something from nothing grow into something. So he was right. He was He was right there. Now, I know every single time, though, he's not like, yes, baby, right away. Right. right? And that's what women I think that when we have these great ideas and we know that our partner has this like amazing potential. And I'm not saying like for y'all to live your whole life trying to bring the potential out of a man. What I'm saying is like 
Candace is giving amazing examples of, you know, showing her man the evidence, like, you know, giving maybe some ideas and then helping facilitate the execution. But at certain points, you're going to get frustrated because he's not always going to hop on it right away. When you see he's not taking action, do you just give up or do you push harder? Like, what do you do? What's your approach in order to, you know, get him in the mood? Because he's not going to be in the mood 24 seven to take your ideas. I remind him about what it, what's in it for him. Sometimes, you know, he could think anything, but I feel like when you kind of just remind your partner what the end result is or our goal, just like th think, let's see straight tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. like, this is what we can get out of this, or this is what the end goal is. I think it's easier for them to see. And, you know, they're not always going to want to do the things and just like, I'm not always going to want to do what he wants to do, but Sometimes a little extra push, you know, from your partner is, is healthy. What does that push look like? Because I feel like for us women, um, and, you know, and mind you, like, I counsel y'all through this, but I want Candace to actually walk you guys through it. Like, the push sometimes can be me repeating myself four times a day, or the push may be um, me taking a step away from you and giving you space to think of it or think about it yourself. Do you find that he's more reactive when you debate with him and try to convince him, or when you plant the seed? walk away and let it grow. I feel like I do a little bit of both, mm. but I've learned that walking away sometimes, letting him think about it, at least in my situation, it works a little bit better. Now that's, it hurts me to do it. Okay, Cause I like, like <laughs> to get in there and I like to hash things out in the moment, whether it be a business situation or even an argument. Um, I like things to be handled in that very moment. And I learned that sometimes your partner is not like you. Yep. You are not dating yourself. You're dating somebody completely different with their own brain, with their own emotions, their own traumas, things that you have nothing to do with. Yep. Um, sometimes time and just leaving them with it for just a little bit doesn't have to be crazy. Um, and it's impossible. We live in the same house. So like, OK, sir. I'm going to give you a minute, uh, but uh, we're about to figure it out one way or another. But letting people have their time, I've learned it's sometimes it, it it's better. <laughs> I like that you bring up the differences in personality, right? We oftentimes will throw in their face like, if this were me, I would do it this way. Or, you know, I've done this for you. Why can't you do just, you know, what I ask? And the person isn't you. They have a whole different life experience. And I think that we forget sometimes that we don't know the whole story. We don't know if what we're asking from them is triggering. We don't know if what we're asking from them is something that, you know, maybe they're struggling with like self-esteem issues on their own. Uh, I have this other couple that I'm working with and like, you know, the, the um, my female client, she, you know, pushes, pushes, pushes. But what she doesn't understand is like the way she talks to her partner sometimes will make him feel inadequate. It'll make him feel like I'm not doing enough. And so no matter what I do, it's not good enough for you. So I'm not going to do anything. And mm. like, I'm going to make you feel bad the way that I'm feeling bad. And if, if we just change the approach, you know, if we operate in our feminine and you guys hear me talk about masculine feminine all the time, I think that it sounds like that's what some of the shift is that you do because you operate strongly in your masculine energy because that's what it takes. Like sometimes for us to be successful when you're building an empire, mm -hmm. you need to be in like drive mode. Yeah. You need to be in conquer mode. You need to be in, I'm, you know, boss directing, um, delegating mode. But when it comes to partnership, sometimes it gets convoluted in like how to transfer that over and actually be a little bit softer when it comes to guiding him. How do you flip the switch? Because I know it could be yeah, hard. You just did tough. like a, a 10 count for, you know, a major artist. And then now you're like, oh, I got to be soft with you over here. Like, yeah. I just lit the stage on fire. It's like for me, it's even now since we've met, I was more on the, uh, on the social media side rather than dancing. So he caught me in the in between. But like, yeah, I would go from starting or com completely coming up with this whole collection into, you know, submitting and you know that took a little bit that took that was a big learning curve uh for me I still have to you know sit back sometimes but I feel like that's an incredible that's what I want in a partner I don't want to have to always do things I don't always want to be the one I want to sit in my feminine mm -hmm. it's not uh, sitting uh, me being masculine doesn't help anyone it's not it's not something that I strive to be or you know, so um, learning that process has been probably one of the best 
like it's it's an amazing process because I'm going into being a wife. I, I I've always wanted to be a wife. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to be a mother. Um, and that comes with it. And if that's what, you know, this situation or this, this relationship is going to teach me, then by all means, bring it on, Zaddy. <laughs> Tell me to sit down. <laughs> all right, I will. What's up? Did you grow up um, in like, because I know you come from a two-parent home, but did you grow up uh, seeing your mom submit to her father, to your father? I watched my mom work mm. and submit to my father. Ooh. And my dad was the king of the house without ever saying that he was king. Wow. So like she always served him food. She was always cleaning. She always went to work. My dad always went to work, always sat down and got his dinner and was so, and the way he would speak to my mom or the way my father speaks to me, mm -hmm. the way he speaks to the women in his life mm -hmm. is, was very, he's that guy. My dad is that guy. What Shout is out this? to my is dad. Is this like confidence? Is this cocky? Ooh, what, what is your dad? Oh, talk? it's um, it's uh, it's what we call swag. Like what he's it has the your ultimate. Talking? He is swag. Ooh. My father is. He's good with his words. He's articulate. He's smart. He's a math guy, but he's also an artist. Mm, so, so it's like left brain, right brain. Yes, and he just. But then he always made my mother feel amazing. I've never really seen them argue ever in my life so when they got a divorce i was completely blindsided Ugh. um but he with us with me i mean he would make me feel so beautiful just be like i would be in my pjs hair out crazy coming back looking crazy and he'd be like wow you just look incredible you look so beautiful today my father was that guy so so watching them argue never really but um i saw my mom completely yeah, he was the king of the house what and was she showed the, me. What was the return on investment though? So um, a hard thing for people to swallow is, uh, why do I got to submit if, you know, I'm working too and he's working like now. He this made day her feel age. amazing. Okay. He made her feel amazing with the words that he would say. He would always support her. She wouldn't have to lift anything. She wouldn't have to open doors. He's so, he's such a good man. He was always, he's still a great man. Like, so in exchange for her softness, uh, with him, he made was, sure that he treated her more delicate words of affirmation, acts of service in different ways. She got it all. Now, it are all. we mirroring that behavior in our current relationship? I try my best to be like my mom. Okay. Um, Does it get hard at times? Absolutely. The balance of work and being in a relationship fully committed to where I'm really just a submissive, complete submissive woman is definitely for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a challenge. Um, I think it is for all of us, though. Like I speak often to, you know, <laughs> I'm an alpha chick and I'm with the alpha male. But you guys don't get it twisted. Every now and then I do lose my mind. Um, <laughs> you seem and, like that type. <laughs> I'm married to a Jamaican girl. Um, and I'm a Latina. Don't play Ooh, me. But you're, you're a Latina too. Yeah. Um, Cuban We're and wild. black. Yeah. And Haitian. So, yeah. yeah. And Haitian. So I'm like that, that energy comes out that, you know, that bloodline comes through. You gotta and like back. every now and then when he, when every now and then I could be soft. Right. And he may still feel the need to flex or he may not be getting like sometimes his way on something. And I will sometimes pump my chest back, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, it's not 24 seven, I'm submissive and I'm soft and I'm in my feminine. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, you got me so twisted. Yeah. I wish you would again. Mm -hmm. And in those moments, like when I do pump my chest, right? I know it can go left or it could go right. And I could like mess up our entire day. And I think that we forget we have the power to, you know, guide our man emotionally, but also it, for ourselves, we have the power to guide ourselves. And so when I know that I might not like the outcome of this battle, right? I have an opportunity to change the way that I'm communicating. And in that moment, actually be like, you know what, you're right, I'm wrong. Or I apologize. Honestly, I shouldn't have spoken that way to you. And that's hard if you feel justified because maybe he spoke that way to you. But I don't want to not get along. Right. So what's more important to me, winning this battle or the peace that I'm going to create in the house? It's the peace. I'm going to stop. And I'm in that moment, I'm like, okay, I just sat in my masculine. I, I got it out a little bit, but now let me, let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. And when you find those moments where you can bring it back and be soft again, I think that is also winning. Yeah. Because I want to have a good day. Right. I don't want to continue. I don't want to fight. If there's enough going on in the world outside of this house that 
is messed up. Yeah. If there's anything that we can control, if there's anything that we can just live our lives, we, we don't know if we're dropping dead tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm dead serious about that. And I, we talk about this kind of thing all the time. Our home needs to be peace. I do not want to fight. I do, there's nothing that we should be fighting about. There's everything else in the world. We could be going down in flames. As long as this house is under control and we can communicate with each other, that is the goal. Let's have an amazing day. This might be the last day. I do not take a day, not a time, not a, yep. anything for granted. And to piggyback off of what you said, absolutely. Peace, peace, peace. I will take it. I don't need to be right all the time. I, I don't feel... A lot of people say, I just don't want to fight. Yeah, pretty, pretty I, I don't like fighting. I'm not a confrontational. Some people get off on fighting. I don't like the fight. I just want to just understand each other. Get. I'm not going to just be like, you're right just because you're right because I don't want to fight. I'm going to save my peace, but I just, let's just have a good day. Well, I think too, you also, your man used to be an athlete and still is athletic, but a lot of women, you know, we are in relationship with men who also very much relate to the competitive energy of yes. sports. Yes. So if we operate in a competitive energy with them, <laughs> then we are no longer teammates. You are offense and ball. I am defense or I'm defense and you are offense. And like, who's going to, who's going to ride that wave longer. We can try with all our might, but at the end of the day, they're always going to outman us. They're always, if we operate in our masculine energy, they're always going to pump their chest a little <laughs> bit harder, so true. hold out a little bit longer, go for the jugular, mm -hmm. right? We may say something catty or, you know, snarky because we feel justified. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to, he triggered me. So I'm going to say this, but he has the ability as well to cut us and make it hurt even more. And then we're like, Oh wait, you took it too far. You crossed the line. But it, we didn't need to start the fight and say something hurtful to begin with because I think that we forget that we also hurt their feelings. We are a team. Yeah. Let's be a team. You think these people, these athletes are on the field arguing with each other about whatever? No, the goal is to get on that side and beat the team that's in front of us, which in this sense, it's the world. Let's get, <laughs> let's get to the goal line. And I'm not trying to fight with you, fam. <laughs> I 100% I get that. When um, you do, though, have something that maybe he doesn't agree with, right? Mm -hmm. Do you ever just say, like, hey, that's fine? Because oftentimes we may have, like, a great idea, and they say no flat out. Is there ever anything that you have a great idea about, and he's like, absolutely not, I'm not getting with it? I think I've gone to a really good place where <laughs> I just won't <laughs> ask him for something I think he's going to say no to, because we are five years in. Um, I've probably had my share of his nose, but to this point, like, I don't really know that I really ask him for, ask him things that I don't think that he'll really tell me no for. Like I, I've gotten down to a science. Okay. So I, it sounds like you've researched your partner. Yeah. You study I, I know him. him. I know him. And like I said before, just, I got to just remind him of what's in it for him. And usually he bites. Okay. You have shared how you have been able to motivate him. How does he motivate you? Because you are someone who's a visionary. Like you are huge on execution. You get the job done. How does he inspire you? How does he encourage you? Because it has to be reciprocal for right. the purpose mate relationship to work. Well, I'm human. So yeah, I can be all the things strong, powerful, awesome. I'm absolutely a woman's woman. I have emotions. I have doubt. I um, I have run a business, so imagine there's so many things that could go wrong. He's my rock. He's my stability. He pushes me to go even further than what I could ever have imagined. Um, there's been so many different instances, but I mean, even going through it with PCOS, mm. um, he's my partner. He had to live with me gaining yeah. all this weight, not feeling myself moping around, mad about the pimples on my face um feeling like the lesser version of myself um he never once told me that i looked crazy was acting up was always tired he never he never talked down to me he always kept just uplifting me to where i didn't it was to the point where i'm like what are you what are you looking at <laughs> who are you, you this is not the person you started dating <laughs> Um, I'm confused. It even got me even more frustrated because I'm like, fam, I'm, am I going, cr I must be going crazy because you don't see it. Cause I'll, he, he just didn't make it known to me that, you know, he, he, he's just, he's my ex extra push. He's my rock. He's my best friend. 
And um, he always pushes me to go the extra mile. Like, give me an example. So, like, what's uh, an incident that's happened where maybe you had some self doubt or you weren't confident about something, and he encouraged you to do something or get out of your own way? Um, outside of the PCOS thing, even just an instance where we were, I was on set doing a music video for one of the coolest. The best artist ever. I can't even say it right now. The video hasn't come out yet. She signed an NDA. I signed an NDA <laughs> and I cannot say, but just know that this person went and performed, right? This, this icon icon goes and performs and then moves out of the way. And the dance circle opens up mm. and no, normally I guess in a situation, you kind of know like when it's your time to go out and when it's mm -hmm. not. I wasn't about to go out because she just walked out of the frame. So like, there's really nothing. Like, do I want to go on after her? There, there's really nothing. And this person that I'm talking about is the one. So like, <laughs> I, you know, especially with the dance stuff, like she's, she's it. So, uh, he pushed me. He, he physically nudged me Ooh. into the circle. Like, boop. He said, boop, boop, tap, tap, get on out there. And that was probably the most liberating moment I've ever had in my life. Um, because that was the one person I had never danced with or for in my career. And this is recent. So like, I don't dance for people anymore, guys, by the way, I, that's a, that's a choice. Um, but in this situation I got called, I made You're it like, I'm gonna make this happen. And, and he was there and he literally pushed me. So that motivation. And then when we, when we got off set, he was like, you did that. Like, that Ooh. was crazy. Like, he's like, what were you thinking? Were you not going to go out there? Are you crazy? That was your time. And I was like, I just almost let it pass me. So, I mean, physically pushed me, motivated me. Um, and just in, in everyday life, this, this man is by my side, you know, and I'm, I'm glad he's my partner. How do you reward him for the, the motivation back? Right. So like he did that situation. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you continue to motivate him to continue to motivate you, right? That was like a, a, a high moment mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. You want more of that. Yeah. How did you reward him for that behavior? I'm always hitting him with some, with those affirmations, girl. I'm a, I love speaking things into, I love hearing things. Mm -hmm. I'm a words of affirmation type. Um, so anytime he does anything, great. You should see, you people should listen to our household audio. <laughs> a lot of it is I love it when you, yeah, uh, you know, you made I me feel. It when I you. appreciate it when you. Oh my gosh, you look so, or you made me feel like I'm very much so like, and, and I think he likes it. He's he's more of a acts of service kind of dude, mm -hmm. but I I'm definitely always. I love stroking his back. I love physically and. But that's not twenty four seven. Like you can't. You, you're not in I love with twenty four seven. When when he acts up or he gets on your nerves, mm -hmm. do you still stroke that ego? Do you still feed the love languages? Um, I I do it in a way like this. I tell him what I like. Okay. I hit him with the. I'm not really sure about this. I didn't like it when you did this, mm -hmm. and then go back in with the with the affirmation. So okay. It's a communication thing. That is a shit sandwich mm. so what candace is telling you is affirm him mm -hmm. give that constructive criticism and then affirm him again right so it would uh look like um and i'll use an example right now <laughs> if you're <laughs> listening to this audio you may hear my husband's loud ass <laughs> business conversation in the background while he knows that i'm taping a podcast <laughs> but what i'm not gonna do is be like you're so disrespectful you don't value my work what I am going to do when he gets out of that meeting and this podcast is over is I'm going to tell him how much I appreciate, you know, him um, being the boss man that he is and leading these team meetings. Um, I'm going to let him know that um, I value when he is just as considerate of my job as he is his. And then once again, I'm going to say, you know, but I, I know how it is to like have to run these meetings and to be a team leader. And baby, thank you for always leading us. Mm, mm. So I smushed that constructive criticism in the center of those two affirmations. OK, that's very hard when you're in your feels or you're in your emotions to do, because oftentimes we just want to tell them the problem. Yep. Like we just want to go straight to this is what you messed up on. This is why I'm hurt or why I feel disrespected. But when we do that, now they have to operate in place of defending themselves, trying to explain why they did what they did. 
And really all we is like really all we want or what we should want is just the change of behavior. Yeah. Next time I tape, I just want you to not be as loud in the background. Yep. Right. You yep. knew I had this podcast. Yep. However, I'm not going to get my needs met by reprimanding him, by treating him like a child. It's conversation. Yeah. It's, and it's how you say things. So, so important. those affirmations, I yep. feel like. People have a hard time with those affirmations, especially if they don't get them, though. Well, when you when you use that strategy and you see it works, it's not going to be hard to do it again. So then it just turns into conversation. And I promise you, you've taught me that. And I don't know that we've had arguments. I think we just have had like some dope, Yay, crazy, strong conversations. That. But um no, you guys use what she just said. <laughs> that works, women. Uh, we need to not show him this. Um, this, this episode. I'm gonna cut this part <laughs> out. Like, That's what you've been doing. Yeah, to no, me. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this part out. I'm gonna send him the the edited version. Um, but yeah, no, that that definitely works, and it just turns into a conversation rather than turning it into a fight that's unnecessary. I love that. I love that. So, like, yes, take that spicy tip. Also, I want you to share a little bit about how you. Um, juggle building your business but also making time to like help your partner build his mm. because it can sometimes feel like you're pouring more into someone else than you are yourself do you ever find like it's a hard juggle between I want to see him grow but I also need to see myself grow are you ever stressed for like energy or time management when you have a partner who's also an entrepreneur that's a great question um I mean, a lot of the things that we do are intertwined, so it never really feels, I mean, of course it's work, but um, I think prior, putting our priorities like in our relationship part of things, like after a certain time, we turn our phones off, mm. weekends off, you're really not going to get a text message from me until Monday morning if it's about work, you know, putting time aside for our relationship. Now, when it comes time to our businesses, um, we both do work from home, so, you know, putting like I just sometimes give him the eye like sir I'm working right now just like he's working mm -hmm. and you know there's there's conversations like that but it's it's tough because we do like you said we're both entrepreneurs yeah. and it's kind of hard to differentiate like when I'm pouring into his nor or when I'm pouring into mine and mm -hmm. putting into um mine separately and this is my project and this and this is our project or this is your project let me help you with that I think it's more of like a flowing situation it's a lot of it is kind of it's mixed because you guys work together because it, we do work together I feel together. like couples though they um get breaks from one another because they have like their own separate lives or jobs yeah. they get to flip that switch a little mm -hmm. bit easier versus when you're working with your partner and your livelihood is so dependent on their contribution mm -hmm. um I work with a lot of entrepreneurs who, you know, they come to me because they are like, it's super hard to work with your partner yep. and separate work from the personal relationship. Yeah. Because when they're attacking something or showing their disapproval about something that they don't like that, you know, maybe I just launched or maybe I did or maybe I implemented, you know, we take it very personal because that's like our baby. Yep. And I say often prior to my real child that I birthed, <laughs> the spicy life has been my baby, mm -hmm. right? So I I feel that and I, you know, would take it personal too, but you do have to do what you said, which is separate that like off Time switch. For us. Yeah. Time for us. You don't get to bring up work. Yeah. No. Def I'm telling you, after a certain time, like we you would think we're old people. After eight o'clock PM, really? Te phones any type of other distractions we're good like I don't want to answer those whatever you guys need to talk about even my own business like yes what's so crazy is I do a lot of business overseas and they always text me at five o'clock from five o'clock on I'm like I'm <laughs> tapped out by five o'clock my brain is fried by five so I try to keep like the five to eight and then after eight o'clock you know we kind of just put everything down and you know he's the first person out of bed every single morning at five in the morning mm. like he doesn't play that and he takes time for himself mm. he's the most consistent man I've ever met in my whole entire life ever 5 a.m that alarm is off this man gives me a kiss on my forehead yeah. and he's out. He takes a minute for himself, which he does his meditation, all the things and goes into his own time. He, he prioritizes his time. Yep. And I respect that. I'm like, I'm not going to go out there. And he likes the quiet in the morning. He takes time for himself, which is very important, which in return gives me time for myself yep. in the morning. Do whatever I want to do. Make my little matcha, play with my dogs, <laughs> enjoy before it's time by like 7 a.m. to actually start like my business day. So um, that's another motivational thing, by the way. This man is up 
every single morning. So it pushes you it to pushes like, get me your butt up. to get up. Like I can physically work from my bed until I can. I can go until one, two, three, two o'clock if I really wanted to. <laughs> but because he's up, I'm up by seven. Like I'm I'm up by seven and um out of there. So So he's motivating you through example. Like absolutely doing he's not, doing it first and then yeah. showing you look, babe. Yep. You can do this too. Like look how much I accomplished in and one give day. yourself give yourself priority give yourself time like he wakes up early so that he can meditate i'm just like i don't even know how you do that like yeah. i would fall asleep during my, medit- my meditation so giving yourself time the the human <laughs> your own body then giving each other our own time and then in between the time make money together build, <laughs> build that's build, the best build. part when you get those uh checks rolling yeah, into the bank account together and that to me is better than coming into a situation for my life not Say anything about anybody else's life, but working hard at something now, individually. I'm going to ask you a personal together. question about that. Cause you keep saying like, we're making money together, making money together. Are you doing like a 50, 50 split mm-hmm. or is it, um, well, it was my idea. So I'm going to take like more of the cut, right? Cause there's a lot of people who are watching mm-hmm. who work with their partner and maybe they don't feel like they're getting their fair end of the, you know, stick or you know, maybe it is like half and half. Like, how are you dividing that up? What's fair or not? That's a great question. That's something that we had to kind of just trial and error. But we started our own bank account together. So we both have our individual accounts. Then we have the Komar account. Mind you, his name is Omar. My name is Candace. Komar, get into it. We have oh, a YouTube cute. channel. Komar. So the Komar account. <laughs> we have the Komar business account. Whatever goes into the business account is ours. And there's no 50 50. There's no, you get this. Whatever money that we bring in together goes into that pot. I have the debit card. So technically, I can spend <laughs> whatever um, I want on it. Um, but, and he doesn't touch that account. But I mean, it's all fair. Um, no, but um, we, we put money into the account and with whatever gigs we get, sometimes he brings in a job or, Sometimes I bring in a job depending on what the situation is. And that's another thing about being an entrepreneur. You never know where it's going to come from. Yeah. You don't know when it's going to come, you know, come in. And that's also been different because he is has a more of a structured lifestyle. Mm. Coming from football, everything is like super laid out. Yeah. I come from more of an artistic background. So never knew when the next check was going to come in, that kind of thing. So that's been also a balance with finances and being in a relationship. But in this situation, putting money into that account and we are partners. So how have you put him at ease though? So if he's used to more of like that um, structure, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and some people may have a partner who is used to maybe that knowing the paychecks coming in every two mm-hmm. weeks. How do you take some of that stress off of your partner when you're introducing them to a new lifestyle or, you know, maybe not the consistency that they need in order to feel like the household is being taken care of 24 seven. Well, he has his own structure he doesn't need the Komar account. Mm -hmm. So he has his own businesses that he started that is consistent. This extra money, this Komar account, this business that we have together Mm -hmm. is our, our savings. It's our life money. It's our extra. If it was his only form of income, I could understand him maybe a little bit more structure and like, okay, this is how much you're taking out, but he has his own thing. So I think it's important to, to stay financially stable individually and then i think just in general relationships be your own person and come into it yep. as whole as you possibly can yep. to be able to come in and, and and be able to flourish together so i want to give you guys like some spicy tips on what candace is saying to consolidate this so that you get some like quick boom boom booms comprehending how to motivate your partner okay so um i've touched on this too on um my girl uh b simone and uh, Megan's podcast, no, for sure. So if you guys have listened to, to that episode, Ooh, my girl, <laughs> let's just start right now. Mm, if you I love them. Listen to that one, like listen to the episodes, uh, two of them. It was really, really good. But like, touched on self determination theory, and what this is is there's three components to it. Okay, that someone needs in order to like execute. Okay, in order to feel that self motivation, they need competence, they need autonomy, and they need relatedness. So, mm. co- so what some of the things that Candace is sharing is like she affirms her partner by letting him know, like, good job, you're doing great at this. Okay. Relatedness is, you know, letting him know like how much she cares for him and how much she loves him and like seeing him through those things, the connection that she has. And then the other one is autonomy, 
where he gets a decision and choice to feel like he is the master of his own fate. Like he is in the driver's seat. So by not crowding him, by not fighting with him, by like planting the seed, you know, uh, sharing why it's important and what the benefits are, and then taking a step back allows him the space to feel like, yes, I want to sign up for this or no, I don't. So those are the three things that you need. Okay. And then you also need to, like she said, study your partner and research him to know and um, figure out what motivates him. Is it internal within? He wants to do it for the love of self, for his purpose, for the, you know um, his gift to God, or is it extrinsic motivation, which it sounds like there's a little bit of both. Like Omar has intrinsic motivation where it's like coming from within. He knows if I meditate, like I'm um, pouring into my self love and I'm fueling my needs. But then it also sounds like you do a lot of extrinsic motivation, which is here are the receipts. Here is the return on your investment. You are going to make X amount of money. This is how much it's going to be in our account. We also got the Comar account. So you can see it grow and grow and grow. And baby, once again, look at like how much we're able to, you know, bring in extra. So it sounds like you're like covering all the facets of self-determination. But then also I want to give you guys these other nuggets that she's also touched on to just make it really concise for you when it comes to um, trying to avoid breaking up or divorce. Cause a lot of times we feel like our partners not you know, equally yoked with us. We feel like, um, you know, we want to go a different route because maybe they're not as ambitious or maybe we feel like we've been pressuring them too much. Um, and maybe we just get fed up. Okay. I got these, um, next little spicy tips I'm giving you, um, from, a defeatingdivorce.com if you want to check it out. But I'm going to just give you some of these because I was actually in agreement with this. So tell me like if you've executed these ones, okay? It's, it may be a repeat too, but like biggest cheerleader singing his praise in order to get him to do something. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Nagging, have you, are you guilty of ever nagging though? I probably did in the beginning for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How do you stop yourself from nagging? Um, learn doing what you said from from before which is completely come in with a positive affirmation tell them what's wrong and then close it back out with that so we don't not nag anymore i'm not an i don't think so (laughs) we're gonna ask him omar's gonna be be in the comments like excuse me (laughs) that part on number blah 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 no no i hope i hope i don't but um i don't think i do okay next one um communicate clear and direct um, so balancing your, you know, emotions about how you feel about it, but also mixed in with logic. Are you communicating clear and direct with your partner? I would say that I, I am. Okay. Next one, have patience and allow room for mistakes. A lot of us mm. give mm. orders. We tell our partner to execute. And then if our partner flunks or does not pass it or it doesn't come out, we, maybe we didn't make the amount that we thought or maybe they, they didn't, you know, upload in time or, you know, present when we thought that they should have or do the deck the way that it should have been. We don't give permission for them to fall right. and be there when they get back up. They only get met with our ridicule mm-hmm. and I told you so's. Having patience. So do we give room for mistakes? Yeah, I would say. Okay, Candace says yes. I want to make sure you guys are asking yourself too. Do you give your partner room for error? And if so, how do you handle those mistakes, right? Are you uplifting? Do you pick them up or do you hit them while they're down? Because you ain't gonna, that's not going to motivate them if you're doing that. Do not. <laughs> Next one, um, help manage stress by offering help where you can. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a cool thing that we do now. Like maybe every night or any other night, like, how are you feeling? And is there anything I can do for mm. you to, to make you feel better? He, when I, today on my way here, he's like, man, you wouldn't believe what I did. I pulled my hamstring. I did a little kick and I was talking about your food and I did a kick and I pulled my <laughs> shit and I'm like, oh, well, Okay, well, I'm about to go shoot right now with Spicy. <laughs> I love you. Uh, when I get back, is there? do you think I'm going to need to give you some ice, mm. you know, ice the leg? Or, you know, maybe we should go to the spa. Maybe if it's not me massaging you, yep. should we go to the spa? Do you want me to make the appointment? That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I think definitely. Okay, you guys, peep this. I'm giving you another spicy tip of what Candace just did. She asked her man how she, he needed her to show up for him. But then she also gave him options. So what she did was she was like, do you need this A, do you need B, or do you need C? Then that allows Omar a chance to say, hmm, I need B, right? 
Now she gets to execute B. His needs are met and he's happy he got what he wanted, but he also thinks it was his own idea because he chose the option that he wanted mm-hmm. versus Candace saying, oh, I'm going to go get you um, the gun because you know you need the, you know, the massage gun and him being like, no, babe, that hurts me and her bringing it anyways, which sometimes we will do. Mm. So love that you gave the options because now he feels like... I'm happy that I told you um, to book that massage that appointment for us. I told you to. <laughs> I told you. That's right, baby. You told me to. That's right, baby. Okay. <laughs> I got you, boo. <laughs> Next one, which I know for sure you do, remind him of the rewards. This one is huge. Yes. I just want to It reiterate. works in my household, so I suggest that if you can, just give it a whirl. I promise you it'll probably work. Yes. <laughs> Uh, next one is listen and ask, um, not just how he would like for you to show up for him, but like when it comes to the listening component, right? Mm -hmm. Actually listening, not listening to rebuttal, not listening to debate, not listening to argue him down and prove why you're right, but listening so that he feels seen and heard. And so repeating back what he said to you, you Mm. can put it in your own words, Mm. but repeat back to him after he says, like, (laughs) I pulled my hamstring. Are you saying, okay, so what I'm hearing is, baby, that your leg hurts and you want me to, like, help you heal it? Like, ask him what it is, like, and to elaborate on it and repeat back what he said so that you can show to him that you understand what he's asking. And that's something that I've had to learn because I've tried that. And he's like, you didn't hear what I said. (laughs) That is not what I said. I did not say that. That's not what I wanted. So that's definitely something I'm still working on. Um, (laughs) It's okay. I got you. I got you. But but I think it does work. But it's definitely. (sighs) Sorry, babe. Because oftentimes, too, because our feelings are involved, we will say, oh, so you're calling me da 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 or you're saying I'm not good enough, or you're saying da 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 And what we're doing is projecting sometimes our insecurities or the way that we may be conscious of or, you know, in our feels about. And that's not what they're saying at, at all. all. Sometimes we're completely just in two different worlds, staring there, talking to each other, and just not understanding. So, so if we don't repeat it back correctly or we don't get it right, right? Like, say we didn't maybe listen and mm-hmm. we got our feelings involved – we can ask them to tell us in a different way. Like, okay, baby, maybe I'm not catching it. Can you share with me or put it in different words to help me to understand? And mm-hmm. that really shows to them that we care and we really do want to meet their needs and figure it out. Like in that moment, like how can I be there for you? How can I show up for you the way that you need? But if we're on two different pages, he's going to be like, you don't get me. Right. And then he's not going to put forward that same effort and making sure he understands us. And that's not what we want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last one. Um, don't be judgmental. You may not know the entire story. And you touched on this when you said the um, the you know, you don't know what traumas or triggers or things your partner has experienced. Sometimes we are looking at their actions or maybe them not moving on something and we immediately want to pass judgment. We want to call them, you know, uh, lazy or like you don't trust me or We want to start accusing them of things because we know we gave them a bomb ass idea or we tried to encourage and motivate them to, you know, go to that interview or take that, you know, job. And maybe they're, you know, having a hard time processing like the response or even, you know, deciding if they want what it is we're trying to encourage them to take. We have to be mindful of the fact that there's still room for us to learn and maybe we don't have a full understanding of like the why behind it making a safe place for them to express that to us. You know, is there, is there more that you want to share? You know, why aren't I comprehending this? You know, what happened in your past that is making you like hesitant about this? Are you doing some of those things? Yeah, I try my best. I I know you are. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, while I'm asking Candace, like, girl, if you ain't putting uh, putting into the tools that I gave you. She's like, use them. I'm like, because Omar is applying the tools. (laughs) (laughs) I know Omar is. He's real smart. Working on it. (laughs) No, I love that you are um, on your self-growth journey and that so is he. And that makes like a great combo because you guys are able to like be more forgiving, more understanding of one another and then nurture the relationship in a way that like fuels each other as well you guys are relationship goals so Mm. i'm gonna ask you real quick like do you feel like uh the pressure to represent when you post him and when you like showcase him like black love i don't feel any pressure um because i'm genuinely living in my you guys are watching the feelings that i'm having in Mm. the moment i don't ever feel like i'm posting for someone to be like oh that's cool that's not cool i grew up in a music industry where we weren't even allowed to have boyfriends i was married to music Mm. i wasn't allowed to i did music guys (laughs) sorry for that shishi p that never came out listen like i used to 
not be allowed. So now that I can express myself yeah. and show that I am in a relationship that is, it feels kind of like freedom a little mm. bit. And whatever you guys get from that, I hope that you see that it's just simply a girl that fell in love with a man, that a man that fell in love with a woman that is, we're just having a good time and we're not trying to project anything really. Um, those kinds of hashtag relationship goals or mm -hmm. black love. That's all things that you guys have or audiences have put on us, which is amazing. Thank you. I, I have relationships that we look up to like Jay-Z and Beyonce, like y'all are king and queen to us. You know, there's, there's, there's relationships we absolutely look up to. So I could see the question, but I, for my life, I genuinely feel like it's just, there's no added pressure. I, I'm going through That's the motions good. with my man and we're going through it and we're not afraid to talk about. You're just letting us about, in. You're giving us preview to it. It's not like coming from a place of pressure. Like, oh, we got to post this Wednesday. No, we haven't given them no, a relationship unless, post. Unless it's um like YouTube and things like that, where we have to post on a certain, and that's, that's uh, work stuff. But like, as far as our relationship and us hanging out and, it's uh it we, right. we thank you for letting us uh get to see your beautiful faces and bodies oh. showcase uh your beautiful products thank you um, <laughs> thank you running on the beach frolicking and i'm like every time i see you i'm like oh i need to do more squats i just think it's um, crazy <laughs> i think it's crazy that people even really um like it's something to watch or it's something to see well it's aspirational i think that because you're living it right you you often forget um, when it is your real life that like people desire relationship, they right. desire companionship, they desire uh, the, the the partnership and the person who motivates them the way that your partner motivates you or you motivate him. So it's not just intriguing, but it's also like, hmm, give me insight so that mm -hmm. I can replicate this Absolutely. so that I, too, can, you know, have this one day. Um, I think I think that it's good, especially when you're putting positive images out there of the love that we aspire to. So I, I commend it, which is, you know, and, and I thank you for coming on here and sharing like your growth and his growth and how you guys are continuous, you know, continuously on your journey, learning together that it's never ending. It's not just, Oh, now he put a ring on it. We don't got to, you know, stop doing the work. It's no. like, no, I want to also have a good marriage. Right. So we're going to get the help that we need. We're going to the right pour foundation. Into ourselves, learn the tools. Yeah. And I've definitely been in other relationships where this was not allowed. Those kinds of things, mm. posting and being out and about holding hands, um, you know, the relationships that the man is just completely overshadowing, like making me feel wow. less than, or he has way more money. He does not want me to work. He does not want me and kind of just didn't let me be free. And so I've had those. What did situations. you learn from that relationship versus this one? Right. Cause if oh. you don't learn, it's like, Ooh, Oh my like, gosh. What did you take away in like what you're not going to repeat? Different relationship. Every past relationship has learned me a uh, has taught me that I things that I don't want in this really ever in the relationship that I'm in now. Mm. So like from ambition to control to freedom to all the things like I've never felt dead before until I was with somebody that told me that I I'm not allowed to work or I shouldn't work wow. and that I should be a you know the mother of his children and like I, we've I mean I'm sure a lot of women have been in situations where the man wants to come in and completely be in complete control. Yep, and I felt completely there. lost. I felt dead. I felt dead. Wow. And I knew that that's not what I wanted. Um, low key, high key, this situation that I'm in now, this relationship I'm in now has been completely manifested. I learned what I did not want in my past relationships. So that's why I can kind of live free now and just be like, yeah, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I get to do what I want to do on the day to day. I get to learn how to be a wifey. I've always wanted to be a wifey. I'm like su such a sucker for love. Um, I still am. I love love. I mean, who doesn't? But like, I'm excited about this one because it's finally so you where agree. It's a good you're place. learning how to. Be a Prepare wife. and be a wife in this. It's different. And Omar is learning how to be a husband through the relationship as well. Even after. Thank you. Because people were coming for me when I was like, you learn from your partner how to be in that role. We're not born knowing how to be in that role. You learn from oh. each other how to be in that role. Yeah. And each person is different as you date. They're going to pull different things Thank out you. of you. Thank you. you know? Okay. So for the sake of time, Candice, you get to tell everybody like where to like find you, where to get all your products. Like you're going to give us, you know, you're out. Let everybody know how they can follow you some more and add to your millions of followers. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, first of all, before I even do that, Spicy, you have changed my life. Aww. Okay, you came in, came in swinging. I needed you, girl, and you've come in for us. So, you guys, I'm so glad you're watching this podcast. And she's been life changing. Can you for cry me. for me real quick? Huh? Cry for me? I'm actually no. about to. So <laughs> I see her eyes water. Yeah, I'm like, I'm I like shaking. You. So <laughs> she, you come in clutch. So I just want to say thank you and thank you for providing this platform for people to learn about relationships because we thrive off relationships yes. and love. And thank you for that. Um, as far as my stuff, you can f follow me. My name is Candace on Instagram. That's Candace with an I. And make sure you follow 5678 Apparel, um, which, listen, 5678 in Roman numerals is V, V I, V I I, V I I I, okay? 5678. Don't be stupid, okay? It's 5678. <laughs> I don't apparel. know my Roman numerals. <laughs> I know. Everybody's like, what is that? Vivian, Vivian. <laughs> um, it's just 5678 uh, in Roman numerals. And you can find us on Instagram. Make sure you guys go get these lashes, these magnetic lashes. We got the best lashes Ay. in the game. Trust me, I, you'll never catch me out without a lash. And it's wearing, I'm wearing mine, okay? And the outfit is 5678. Go yes. get that. Um, I like that it's like making my tummy flat right now. You know, it's, a, it's about the cinching. We yes. like we like a good body shape, okay? I was just grateful I could fit in it. I was like, I think I'm a medium again. I oh, know. You got, <laughs> you got it, girl. No, it does. It really does like concert the torso. And I like the booby part, too. Um, because I feel like it gave me thing. a little scoopy scoop until I get my boob job, which I am gonna get. I I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at spicy Mari. Go to the spicylife.com, click and subscribe, share this episode with a friend who needs to learn how to motivate her man. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The spicy life.